Another very popular signal is a sinusoidal signal, where we have our voltage as a function of time, and that equals sine times 2 pi times a frequency times the time. And how does that look on the oscilloscope? Well, I could use a function generator, or I could just whistle. And then I just froze the screen on the oscilloscope. And if you look at this right now, it just looks like this big blur. And if I change the time scale, right now we're on 200 milliseconds per division, and I make it smaller, then as I do that, you'll start to see a sine wave appear. And that's not a bad looking sine wave. And whistles are typically, you know, mostly one frequency. And you can see that right here. That's a fairly sinusoidal looking signal. And I might ask myself, well, what's the amplitude of that signal? And, you know, if our baseline is right here, that's our zero. You know, we're roughly symmetrical about zero. And the peak, you know, the negative and the positive peak are almost two divisions from that zero. Two divisions negative, two divisions positive. So the amplitude is going to be from the zero to a peak. So it's slightly less than 200 millivolts because we've displaced almost two divisions right there. Now, similarly, if we look at the negative peak, it's this one's almost exactly 200 millivolts. So it's slightly asymmetrical, but that's the nature of the signal. So that's a sine wave, and we could measure the period of the sine wave by looking how much time went by. And if we look at our horizontal scale right here, you know, if we look to see where the repeats in the sine wave are, say if we took the peaks over here, what I could do is I could slide this a little bit to the side, and then it looks like there is a peak here, and then about one and a half time divisions later, we have another peak. So for at 500 microseconds, and we have one and a half time divisions at 750 microseconds. So that's the period of our sine wave. So you'll see sine waves everywhere. And in signals class, you'll learn that you could uh, make almost any signal out of a sum of different sine waves of different frequencies and phases. So it's one of the really neat things about linear systems. A lot of vowels at the English language make up sums of sine waves. You can see if I go A, and we have a periodic waveform over here, and th this is a sum of different frequency sine waves, which produces this you know, repeating pattern, and there's some, uh, usually these are harmonics. Like you can see, there's a fundamental frequency in there, which is the big waveform right there. Then there are a few harmonics in there, you know, which make the overtones, which you know, make my voice sound like more than just a sine wave.